Hey friends, how are you doing? I hope you have a really great day. I'm back in the Canary Islands and I really enjoy it a lot. I really love uh, good weather, so I'm just really happy. Um, and in this video I want to talk with you um, about or talk about this topic, the pros and cons of living alone and how it is to live for the first time alone and just my advice because for me it's definitely been a journey to live by myself um, and yeah I'm really excited to be talking about this topic I really hope it will help some people who are in maybe a similar situation so first of all the intro like basically a little bit about my story so I actually I already lived uh, with my ex-boyfriend together but before that I never lived alone so I think I just um, skipped that step of becoming a full adult, a full autonomous adult and I think that it definitely affected the relationship that I had with my ex-boyfriend in maybe negative ways and because I was just like whenever he left for for example vacation I felt like I was alone in this apartment and I didn't know how to handle it I was super scared to sleep alone it was just weird mm, and I think that now I did a lot of like work and now when I live alone I really for the most part really enjoy it so I think that it is a process and I think that for many people um, it's maybe living alone is super easy because you're naturally just you love solitude, you love to be alone, so for some people it's just they don't have any struggles at all but then there are other people, myself included, who are maybe a little bit more extroverted, who really love uh, just just noise maybe a little bit more, for them it's mm, it might be more difficult and that's okay and also I think it really depends on what is your life circumstance so I remember for me after the breakup living alone it was I just could not do it and so I went back with my parents and then living alone it was just so hard because I felt uh, so much was missing but now I just really enjoy it so I think that if for you in whatever situation that you are living alone feels difficult maybe you just move to a different country to, to a different state whatever and it feels difficult it's okay like have compassion with yourself living alone sometimes can be really hard so yeah have compassion with yourself and 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 keep going so and now <laughs> some of the pros and some of the cons so some of the pros of living alone is for me just freedom and quiet like freedom to do what i want to do when i want to do it so i just go into the if it's my like if it's the apartment that I'm alone in, like I rent it by myself, it's just you come home and it's quiet and nobody's there and you can do whatever you want. Like you don't have to, um, uh, what, what's, like you don't need to take care of other people. You, you can just play music. If you want to play music, you can make food. If you want to make food, it's just very liberating. And I really love that about uh, living alone also it's great to be a little bit more professional when it comes to work so if you work from home i think that sometimes with roommates the problem with roommates is that very often you cannot choose the roommates i mean sometimes you can but sometimes it's uh, just you just get a certain roommate you cannot decide who this person is and then maybe this roommate is very different from you like has complete different values so for example for me i once lived in the canary islands with roommates and there was one like i'm vegan i will be forever vegan so i'm really i am high on animal rights and all of that and i lived together with a carnivore like i would say carnivore because everything that he ate was basically a chicken chicken with rice that was all he ate like that was his diet like breakfast lunch and dinner was basically the same every day so it was just the fridge was full of meat so um i think it's just really nice if you live alone that you can control what does your fridge look like and i think that's really nice and also if you have an apartment for maybe or a small flat or whatever for a lot of years you can really decorate it the way that you want to decorate it you can put plants in it and it's just a really nice experience to create a space that feels good for you 
And also, when <laughs> I'm coming back to the point of professionalism, if you work from home, you can really um, make a good environment for it. And when you have sometimes roommates, you cannot obviously control your roommates. So maybe they play music and then you're in the middle of a Zoom call with your work when you do home office and you it's just dif difficult sometimes to navigate it. And I think these are just a lot of steps that are like a lot of things which make it nice to, to live alone. Also, one thing is that you really can grow as a person. It's really great for personal development because you can learn, okay, these are like this is my space. I need to clean that space. I need to put out the trash. I need to take care of it. And also what is really important, you can learn how to be with yourself, like how to become your own friend, how to uh, sleep at night alone. Like um, for some people, I think that's naturally given. It's just so easy. But I think for other people, myself included, in the beginning, I really struggled with that, with that silence and with being myself. But it, so for me, it was really hard to learn that. Mm, but now it's such a gift to just have myself as my own supporter, as my own um, coach, as my own caregiver, as my own friend, to have that relationship with myself. It really changes everything in my life because it just feels, I feel so much more grounded within myself, which is amazing. So these are all a lot of pros which make living alone really nice. So now let's get into the cons. So I think one of the con is for sure just loneliness sometimes um, that maybe if you don't make plans you are just stuck alone in the apartment and I think sometimes it just can get a little bit lonely especially if you maybe you go to work and then um, or maybe you do home office and then but you're so busy in your mind with work that you just you don't think about making plans and then there's the weekend and then you just there in your apartment and you think what am I going to do because you haven't made any plans so sometimes it's just loneliness and I think that sometimes we don't even realize that we are lonely we just realize it once it's already too late and we are already maybe crying because we feel so lonely so yeah that's maybe a uh, one thing um, another thing is that sometimes I just feel like I'm a little bit more lazy alone. I feel like when when I live with, my, for example, with my ex-boyfriend or even maybe with roommates, I'm just naturally motivated to do more um, because maybe there's more energy in the room. Um, and when I'm alone, I sometimes have to motivate myself. Um, yeah, so that's maybe one one like. And another one is maybe just just not having someone to talk to all the time which could also be a con. And now I'm going to talk about um, some ways that made living alone work for me. Because, uh, yeah, because for me, the first time I tried um, with my boyfriend when he was on vacation to be alone, like, I, it kind of, I was, I think I was just not ready or I just didn't have the tools for it. And I think now I have some of the tools. So one thing that really helped me was affirmations. So when, for example, I get scared um, when I like when I'm I want to go to bed and it's si silence, but then I hear something and I'm scared. Um, just to have affirmations to calm myself down, because in reality, like if you live in a nice uh, area where there's not much criminality, the the chances of someone getting into your apartment are very very low and so usually it's just who knows maybe something in the fridge or whatever that makes those noises so what helps me is first of all um, affirmations to tell myself it's okay it's, it's usually nothing I'm safe it's good also meditation helps me a lot with just putting my hands on my heart and just um, just breathing, slow breathing exercises that really helps. What also helps is of course to um, install maybe, um, what's it called, like security uh, gear if, if that's important to you or maybe get a really good lock or um, maybe put a, have a pepper spray next to your bed just to feel really safe and I think that 
and don't let yourself be judged by other people do what feels good for you because in the end you live alone and it's your apartment it's your space and you want to feel good another thing that really helped me was noise cancelling music i think now actually i don't need it anymore i feel really safe i feel really good like i just go to bed but in the beginning it definitely took me a long time or it definitely took me some time to feel com comfortable so one tip that really helped me was to put noise cancelling music so um, just before I go to sleep just put in my headphones and then listen to relaxing music so that I don't hear those quiet little noises by the fridge or whatever and just <laughs> I'm super relaxed that helped me a lot um, something else that really helped me with loneliness is um, that I listen a lot to YouTube so this video maybe if you are living alone for the first time and you watch this video and um, it might help you to feel less alone because it's just really nice to, to have some background noise um, of for example podcasts or YouTube videos and also music helps a lot to just get a little bit more energized and that helps me a lot and also what helps me is to decorate um, my the apartment a little bit better so um, right now I'm this apartment I'm just gonna stay in for two months so I cannot uh, before I go to another one so I cannot really decorate it that much and um, but if you have maybe one place where you where you know that you will stay many more months or maybe even years it's really nice to to put a lot of effort into the into the room into the space to make it something livable I think that's just makes a huge difference maybe buy some plants or go on Pinterest check out okay a cozy room decoration ideas go to Ikea or maybe go secondhand shopping and really find things that make you feel comfortable um, another measure or another thing that helped me was to get to know um, like if especially if you move to a different country uh, which I did uh, get get to know your neighbors or and or also make friends I think that's really important just so that you know okay maybe my family is in a different country so I cannot have my family help me out but at least I know some people who in case of emergency I can call I can say hey for example you go out at night with friends and you come home and then you realize shit I have my key in, in the apartment and I cannot enter the apartment just so that maybe you have a friend who has a second key that you can go to that friend and say hey do you have the key can you give it to me or if that friend is not at home then you can have you maybe have another friend that you can call and sleep at their place just just have friends that can help you like have a network basically of people that can help you in case of emergency I think that's really important and really helps me to relax when I'm in a different country and when I live alone in a different country another thing that helps me to beat loneliness is voice messages I think that's a big one because sometimes you know I don't call my friends but just sending them a voice message like hey how was your day how are you doing or just talking about things that going on it really helps to to feel less alone even though one person is not there another thing that helps me is to uh, is to understand that I'm not a, like I'm I might be alone in this apartment right now and but I have friends and even though my friends are not like sitting next to me on the couch couch at this moment I still have them and they like me they love me so this this love this <laughs> kind of a good vibration is still floating around a little bit so it's not <laughs> it sounds maybe spiritual but it's not like it doesn't go away so I'm alone at this moment but I still have this have this love for my for my friends and maybe even my family even though my family maybe lives in a different continent or country there's still this love that I can take from another thing that really helped me was to make more efforts I think when I lived with roommates it was so easy to just ask my roommates uh, maybe on a Saturday hey what are you going to do tonight and then they say hey I go to this event and then I say okay I just join so zero effort but when you live alone, 
um, especially in a different country, maybe you just moved there, you really need to uh, make an effort to make friends. And what helps me, like my passion is really dancing. So obviously that's how I make most of my friends. I think a lot of my friends are dancers um, because I go to dance events. Um, but maybe you have another passion, let it be, maybe you like to do other sorts of sports or maybe there's language exchange or there's just, um, I can highly recommend Facebook groups. There's a lot of activities to check out your hobbies or check out expats or digital nomads and then Facebook groups. That's how you can find, um, yeah, just a lot of events and then also motivate yourself to go to those events because, yeah, it's really, I think having friends Maybe it's it's a society, like maybe in German society, we don't value friendship as much. I don't know. But um, I think friendships are super, super important, especially if you don't have your family close by. Having friends that you can count on, that like you, that you like them, um, is really, really valuable for any sort of emergency, etc. And so that's important and to, to go to events. Another thing that you can do is to invite people over. Um, I don't, I have to admit, I don't do that so often because I just, like as a child, I never, I don't know, I never invited people over as much maybe, or as a child, yes, but as a teenager, not. And it just stick with me, but it's definitely something that I want to practice a little bit more to invite people over to maybe even uh, make uh, some sort of gathering, just like inviting maybe a couple of girl, like girlfriends, friends, and then we just sit and we just talk about everything and to create that sisterhood, quote unquote, I think is super important to just feel connected. Uh, so yeah, just invite some people over and it, it, you don't need to prepare like a huge thing, just say, hey, you want to drink uh, maybe some tea or whatever and and just talk maybe in the evening one time I think it's really nice really cozy really nice mm, something else that really helped me was to embrace that feeling so I think it goes in so living alone sometimes it's really awesome and sometimes I just feel really lonely it's it's kind of it's not always uh, like the same sometimes it just goes in waves and I think it's specifically harder if, um, for example, I had a breakup, after that I feel very lonely. Right now I don't feel as much lonely, but if you feel lonely, what really helped me was to accept that it's just a feeling and that this feeling will go away eventually. So I just, um, I think before I was always running away from my feelings and was like, I don't want to, I don't want to feel this feeling and then I would get anxious and now I just say, okay, this is a feeling, um, because my body tells me, hey, you like you haven't seen some people in some time, you should go a little bit out there more. So your body just wants to give you a sign and I take it as a sign and I say, okay, but I have to do work so I cannot go out. So for today, I just feel this feeling, I let it go through me. I meditate through it, I just breathe through it, it's a he very heavy feeling, but it's okay. And then maybe tomorrow after work when I have more time, I can actually organize something with friends. Mm. So yeah, to just accept this feeling that it will sometimes come and sometimes it's there, sometimes it's not there. Um, and yeah, one big thing also for me in that way is to give yourself compassion, to not judge yourself. Because I think the first time when I was living together with my ex-boyfriend and trying to live alone, quote unquote, when he was not there, I really judged myself so much. I was thinking why can you not do it you should do it why do you feel anxious and it's not a very encouraging self-talk and I think now I just feel a lot more it's okay everyone feels lonely sometimes it's a process you can do it and then I, I'm just really kind to myself and that helps a lot so I just maybe even I don't know uh, go to the couch eat something really delicious maybe make even a candle, light up a candle and read a book or just watch a movie and really have a date with myself and be in a be a good partner to myself and that changed everything so if you have maybe that judgy self-talk uh, like 
why do you feel anxious? You should not feel anxious. You should have made plans with friends. Now you're alone again. No, just breathe <laughs> and say it's okay. Maybe you you didn't think about making an appointment with friends, but there's so much time. You can still do it tomorrow. Just make a plan now and then tomorrow you can meet with friends. So really change your change your self-talk. Um, it's really, really, really a huge game changer. And yeah, to just give yourself the time and the, the grace and the compassion that you deserve. And another thing is in the evening, because I feel like during the day, for me, it's, it's easy to be alone for, for the most part. Like, I don't even think about it um, because there's so much to do and I go out, etc. But I think sometimes in the evening, that's when, um, before I want to go to sleep, that's when all the thoughts come and that's when I just think. And what really helps me with that is to uh, to just have a nice evening routine, <laughs> to uh, maybe um, put something on my skin, um, to uh, to maybe have a nice shower, and to maybe watch something nice or read a nice book, something really calming. Um, I think that can really help to just bring bring down your anxiety. Mm, that can really help, and also maybe um, in the evening. When you feel this anxiety rush, you can also uh, just maybe send a voice message or call a friend. Um, because even if you call a friend or a family member, um, they, like, they're not physically with you. But when you, for example, do WhatsApp a video call, they're still, it can still feel that they're in, in the room. And that really helps. And now some practical tips. Obviously, you want to... Uh, um, buy, for example, frozen food that can really help for when you get sick and when you cannot go out um, and just you have, for example, a frozen fruit, veggie and or any frozen meal that you enjoy and have that so that in case of you getting sick and you're not having energy to go out and making something to eat, just that you have frozen food or also maybe uh, canned beans, canned rice, whatever it is, just something that you can put uh, one minute to prepare basically I think that really helps and also put my mind at ease because everyone can get sick and then it's really nice to know that you're at least you have food uh, while you're sick mm, also obviously learn how to cook or prepare food a uh, healthy food that's such a game changer I think when you live alone it's really the time to learn how to be a responsible adult and your own friends and really treat yourself right so yeah just making healthy delicious food for yourself is i think a really great mm, game changer so yeah these are just some of the methods that really helped me and um, because it's okay to struggle i struggled so much in the beginning and now even sometimes i struggle in the evening but uh, it gets so much easier so if you're in a phase where it's your first time or maybe you had a divorce and now after 20 years of living with your husband or girlfriend wife you now you realize you live alone and it feels very hard for you just push through it like uh, get obviously help with therapy etc but it's okay to have all of those negative emotions of living alone it's a change um, and you over time you will adapt and over time it will get easy and I think that when I was living with my ex-boyfriend and he was on vacation and I was in this room and I didn't know how to deal with it I thought I will never make it to live alone and it's so difficult and I have all of this anxiety and I don't know and now after okay some therapy <laughs> and also some uh, traveling the world world basically now I feel very confident uh, most of the time and I just really enjoy living alone. I really do. I really just having an apartment, my own space. And if I want to meet with friends, then meet them, meet them outside of the apartment. But just having a clean kitchen, having the chance to prepare food when I want to prepare food, to not care if I annoy other people. It's, it's really nice. I really do enjoy it and it's probably just a phase in your life so probably I will not hopefully I will not live forever alone I'm hopefully one day have a more stable relationship and that's another phase of my life but really enjoy the different phases that you're in and not like at least for me that's what I tell myself I don't need to rush 
um, rush is so much. I really can enjoy the different phases in my life and learn from them and enjoy them. And yeah, so these are my, my advice on living alone. Um, what about you? Do you have any experience living alone? Do you have challenges? What are your challenges? Does it, I think some years is probably also easier, some years it's more difficult. So what's your experience? Feel free to share it. Probably also, I think for, I definitely recognize for a lot of people, it's very difficult to live alone just for financial means. So they have to share uh, their apartment with roommates but yeah I want to learn more about you what is your history because like this YouTube channel it really feels also talking with friends and I really do enjoy it to create a community where maybe people can help each other out so yeah thank you so much for watching I hope you have a really beautiful day I have an amazing nutrition program that is for women specifically who want to who are maybe a little bit overweight and they have um, not really great skin to change their like to lose weight effortlessly and sustainably with an amazing vegan diet approach that can also clear their skin and it's proven it does work I've do like I've been doing it for a decade already or yeah like at least vegetarian over a decade 12 years so it does work i'm really excited to help people help women specifically with that so if you're a woman and you're struggling with that mm, don't struggle no more <laughs> you really don't need to you can really get and ask myself ask me for help so thank you so much for watching and sorry for my crackled english i'm german and now i live in spain so i just talk spanish all day so i feel like i lose my english but yeah youtube is a nice way to practice have a beautiful day and see you in my next video or see you in my nutrition course for women who definitely want to change their life and want to level up. And finally, have just an amazing relationship with food and not care about calories anymore. So thank you so much for watching and see you in my next video. Bye bye.